This is the Corsair Sabre RGB Pro Wireless Champion Series. Great name I know, but it's a new mouse from Corsair with a rather interesting list of features. It has uh, obviously wireless connectivity using Corsair's sub one millisecond slipstream wireless technology and is also only 79 grams. It even offers 2000 Hertz polling, which I'm not sure we've seen in a wireless mouse or wireless, wireless peripheral before, but there are a few catches. So let me run you through it and talk you through my thoughts and my experiences while using it. Let's start with the connectivity, which as you can see from the switch on the bottom, this supports both Bluetooth, specifically Bluetooth 4.2 low energy, and the included uh, wireless 2.4 gigahertz dongle which gets hidden in a little panel in the bottom along with a little message of hi that's nice now that dongle is like i said corsair's uh, slipstream wireless technology which they claim to be a sub one millisecond connection in theory all things being equal a wired connection would still be faster but in practice, there's really no difference or, or any cost in added latency of being wireless is negated by the, the convenience of not having a wire dragging on your mouse as you flick it around. Add to that the 2000 Hertz polling rate, which I'll leave a video in the cards up above to explain why it can be beneficial to have higher polling rates and just generally explaining that as a whole concept. Uh, the long story short though, is that the higher the polling rate, the quicker the USB can controller in your PC can detect that you've pressed that mouse button and start drawing the frame with that action in it sooner, aka you're more likely to shoot first. That benefit is somewhat undercut by their use of mechanical Omron switches rather than the optical ones that you'd find in something like Razer's Viper 8K Hertz mouse. Again, I'll leave a video in the cards explaining more about optical switches and why uh, they're generally faster and in my personal preference a bit better. But again, the long story short is that with a mechanical switch, you have two pieces of springy metal that come together and when they do, they bounce a little bit. Enough that the mouse can register that bouncing as multiple clicks and that can get a bit messy so what you have to do is it's called debouncing to cancel out that signal which is basically just adding a delay between when you first receive a signal and when you actually send it out to uh, you know over usb with a, an optical switch because you're just making and breaking a beam of light you don't have to do that and so they can register effectively instantly whereas mechanical switches because you have to debounce them and add that delay you're adding in extra sort of potentially unnecessary delay to that uh, action being registered with that said uh, with the introduction of the K70 TKL, Corsair introduced effectively a, a reversed debouncing process which uh, effectively sends off the signal immediately and then waits rather than the other way around. In theory that is more liable to misclicks and uh, other issues like that with reliability but in practice I can't say that I had any issues with it and it's something that you can choose to enable in their IQ software under the, the device settings. I think it's button latency optimization or something like that. Uh, if you enable that, that switches that process over. Now, since we're talking about the switches, I should also mention one of the new features of this mouse, which is the quick strike buttons. Essentially, the little tab that connects the mouse lever, the button that you press to the actual switch itself is now resting on the switch fully with literally no air gap in between. The theory is that this is meant to be a faster and more responsive experience and to its credit it definitely is. The only downside is that it seems to have increased the sensitivity of the mouse clicks uh, by a, a fair bit so it's very easy to accidentally press the button or even in my case even just as I'm flicking it around if I put it down on the desk too hard it would register a click or even if you just shake it sometimes it can register uh, so it's a bit of a, a frustration for me as you have to kind of coddle it and be very careful and gentle with it rather than just you know focusing on what you're doing in game. What really impressed me though was just how insanely light this thing is. It weighs just 79 grams 
Trust me, I checked. Uh, and yet this is a wireless mouse with a lithium polymer battery inside and what I would call a, a non-compromised shell. It's actually a really decent build quality and fairly uh, rigid, so that's great. And it means that you can flick this around for hours on end and your wrist won't absolutely hate you for it. In fact, it even makes up for what I would call the, the lacking side grip because it's just sort of glossy plastic where you really don't have much purchase on it. But because it's so light, it's easy to still hold on to or even lift up even if your fingers might slide around. Despite its low weight, it still offers a fairly reasonable battery life. Corsair quote up to 60 hours using the 2.4 GHz slipstream dongle, admittedly with the RGB lights turned off, or up to 90 hours using Bluetooth also with the RGB lights off, although obviously on Bluetooth you don't have the added benefits of the, the low latency and fast tracking, but it's an option if you want it. In practice, I expect that you'd be able to get a number of days worth of gaming out of it before needing to charge it up. And doing so, you can use obviously the included uh, cable. It's a USB Type-C cable for the Type-C port that's in the front. Uh, and the cable itself is okay. It's a reasonable length, but it's also a sort of, um, I suppose, cheap plastic feel uh, rather than something braided or anything like that. As for its shape, it's definitely a, a larger hand mouse. It's 129 millimeters long in total, and I have what I would call medium to large hands, and I only sort of just fit on it. In fact, it always hits the bottom edge of my palm, pretty much no matter what position I try and hold it in. So if you have larger hands, you might be able to sort of hybrid or even claw grip this if you really wanted. But I think for the vast majority of people, this is gonna be a, a palm grip primarily style. With that said, it's relatively comfortable even for my hands, and I must commend them on the two side buttons which are positioned uh, pretty well for easy access, both for knowing which one is which and for just, you know, pressing them in. They're well reinforced and a reasonable size, so you're not going to accidentally hit them, but you can also very easily find them without having to look or think about it. And we have to mention the sensor, which is actually a Corsair brand one, specifically the Marksman 26K, which, as the name would suggest, goes up to 26,000 DPI and even uh, start, uh, starts at 100, but even has one DPI increments. It's a Pixarter, it's a custom Pixar sensor that Corsair and Pixar have collaborated on, uh, and it offers up to, I think, 650 inches per second in terms of its tracking and up to 50 Gs of acceleration before it will start dropping off. With my t uh, in my time with it, I can say that this tracks remarkably well, and it even has adjustable liftoff distance in the IQ software. As to the playing experience, I had a really good time with this. I should make it clear that if you don't know me, I'm in no way an esports pro or you know anything like that. I'm certainly an average gamer in terms of skill level. Uh, so if you are planning on buying this or really any product, uh, do make sure that you watch more than just one review, mine or otherwise, before you buy. With that said, my experience and my time with it was pretty enjoyable. I felt very confident in the mouse's ability to render my inputs accurately, even if my inputs weren't uh, very, let's say, accurate. I would say that I did feel like I, I was able to hit you know, one or two more shots than I perhaps otherwise would, or maybe I'm just, I was just slightly more accurate in terms of hitting a, a head or a, a torso rather than an arm, for example. Uh, I can't say that I noticed any uh, input lag differences between even the, the standard mouse that I use up here, which is a Logitech G703, uh, because in theory this should be, be faster, but uh, in practice, even with the uh, button optimization and 2000Hz enabled, I couldn't really feel that much of a difference compared to what I did feel ever so slightly with uh, Razer's Viper 8K-Hz. So, should you buy one? Personally, while I had a good time with this, and like I said, I did feel just slightly more accurate while using it, the added sensitivity of the, the mouse clicks, especially the left mouse click, meant that I was spending effectively a, a bit of mental energy on being very careful and gentle with my inputs that I could have been spending focusing 
in game and so for me I think that would probably put me off this uh, personally. With that said, if you can deal with the, the, the added sensitivity, if you're a bit more gentle than an oaf like me, then uh, this is a very nice option. It offers a pretty good range of customizability in things like the DPI profiles, where you have, I think, five different ones that you can cycle through with a button on the top, which has a little RGB LED in it, so you can know which setting you're in, and then you can change what those settings are in the IQ software. Uh, and actually speaking of the IQ software, of course, while well, you can change things like the RGB lighting, your DPI settings, and all of the device settings that I was mentioning, like the liftoff distance, the polling rate, the uh, low latency mode, and even the sleep timer for saving your battery life, uh, I should make it clear that for those device settings and even the hardware profiles, uh, you can, uh, they all get saved to the mouse. So while you will need to install IQ to be able to set up all of those settings, you don't necessarily need it installed or running to make use of them, especially if you're, say, switching to another PC or whatever else, or you just don't want it running in the background. Uh, you don't need it open for all of those things to carry on working. Pricing-wise, Corsair are listing its MSRP as around £90 or $110, which actually sits it quite nicely in the market. It positions it just ever so slightly higher than the Logitech G Pro Wireless, which on paper looks to be a fairly close competitor to this. Unfortunately, I haven't had a G Pro Wireless in, so I can't give you a, a verdict or an opinion on which one I would prefer, but I can say that from my time with the, the Sabre Wireless, it's a pretty decent mouse. It's definitely geared more towards the uh, sort of pro side or the, the more um, careful gamers essentially, but uh, it offers a good experience, tracks well, uh, even with fast movements. Obviously you can set it all the way down to 100 DPI and in one DPI increments if you wanna be that picky. Uh, and the, the relatively lightweight nature, the fact that it's wireless, 2000 Hertz is I guess nice to have. And so, yeah, it's not bad. Obviously do shop around, and if you can find anyone who's had them both, feel free to check out their videos too. Now with that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Sabre RGB Pro Wireless Champion Series? Is it a mouse you'd pick up yourself, or would you go with the G Pro Wireless instead, or would you prefer something with maybe some more buttons, you would rather wired, or just something cheaper, anything in between? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. If you want to pick up one of these, I will be leaving a link to it in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. And of course, as this is just launching, it may not necessarily be available just yet. So feel free to check back if it's not. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, do hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, then you can do that in a load of different ways. If you want to support directly, there is the YouTube join button where you both support me, but get cool rewards for doing so, like access to our Money Men Discord chats, sponsor free videos, and some cool emojis to use in the comments here on YouTube and on our weekly live streams. Or if you'd prefer to support on Patreon instead and still get access to our Money Men Discord chat, then you can do that with a link in the description. There are also a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, a load of other cool designs, or there's also affiliate links if you're buying from places like Overclock UK, you can use those links or just a load of other stuff, so feel free to check it out. I'll leave some more videos on the end cards if you want to keep watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.